we're going to be starting 10.1 surface area of prisms. A prism is something that's going to be categorized by its base. Now the base can be a rectangle, triangle, square, pentagon, octagon. It can be any different shape. If you look right here, this Amazon box, this is going to be, uh, it's got a base of a rectangle. And then you could see over here this candy, which I've always been kind of curious what these taste like. I've never had one of these before, but I've seen them at the store. It's got a base, as you can see here, of a triangle. So today we're going to be talking about those two specific shapes. The first one we're going to be looking at is the surface area of a rectangular prism. If you haven't yet, go ahead and print off the notes that we need for chapter 10.1. The first thing you're going to want to write in here with your red pen is the base of a rectangular prism is always going to be a rectangle. Now if you remember, the area of a rectangle formula was length times width. So the difference here, with a prism, you're going to always have two bases. We've got this base down here, which is at the very bottom, and then you've got this one that's up here on the top. So once again, a prism will always have two bases, and you can kind of color this in. That's going to be the base down here at the bottom. We've got a surface area formula. This right here, the SA stands for surface area, and it equals 2 times the length times the width, plus 2 times the length times the height, plus 2 times the width times the height, which is a lot to remember. But one thing I really want you to focus on is how to figure out and determine what the length, the width, and the height is. The length is always going to be what you're looking at. So when you're staring straight at the figure, it's going to be this side right here, the side that you're looking at. Next up, the width is always going to be the one that comes off on the side. So you can see over here, and then the height is going to be what's up and down. We are familiar with how to find the height of different objects. Next, we're going to be talking about the surface area of a triangular prism. Now for this, the base is always going to be a triangle. Also remember, when looking to see and try to figure out what the base is, you're going to have two bases every single time. So on this one, it has to be a triangle that's the base because you can see we've got the base right here. And then you can also see you've got one other base down here that is also a triangle. The surface area of a triangular prism has its own special formula. You're going to take the surface area equals two times, now I want you to notice this, half times base times height. Isn't that familiar to us? That's the formula for finding the area of a triangle. So as we know, there's one triangle here we can consider that the top, but then there's another one at the bottom, okay? So we've got a top and a bottom, or we have two bases. Then it asks us to also add together the areas of the lateral faces. Now, lateral faces is not necessarily normal terminology that we talk about all the time. A lateral face is simply the area of the sides of an object. So you can see here we've got different sides of the objects, like this. Those are called your lateral faces. But what you have to figure out is try to understand what kind of a shape your lateral face is. For us, the lateral face here is obviously a rectangle. Now something I would like to help you with is always try to label the unknown parts that we don't see labeled there. So if you see that this height right here is six, I can also see that this is gonna be six and that this one over here is gonna be six. So I'm gonna go ahead and label those with a six so that I understand those are each six meters too. Then you can see if this bottom part right here is three, then the top is also going to be three. So I'm gonna label up here that that's a three. Finally, you can see if this down here is a four, this one here has to also be a four. So just try to always label the unknown parts at the very beginning before you begin working. Then there's two other things I want you to put down here just so you remember the area of finding a rectangle is length times width and the area of finding a square is always gonna be S squared. So those are two formulas we're gonna to want to remember whenever we have lateral faces that are rectangles or squares. So let's go ahead and get into the first problem. It says to find the surface area of the prism. So we can obviously see here that this is a rectangle. The first thing that we want to do is to identify which pieces are the length, the width, and the height. 
So looking at your notes right above, the length is the piece that you're looking at straight on. So if I were to be looking at something straight on, it would be this part right here. So that is gonna be known as my length. Now the height, it's the part that's going up and down. So that's pretty simple also. This is going to be my height, which means there's only one other part, it's the width. And if you look at the definition, we said that that's going to be the side. And this does in fact look like the side of our rectangular prism. So if I were to try to identify, I can see that this and this, those two are gonna be the same kind of measurement. So I'm gonna also put a five up here. And if this is a five, then this part over here is also gonna be a five. Now let's see this part down here where I have the length, that's gonna be three inches. Up here at the top, that's obviously also going to be three inches, which means that this part over here is gonna be three inches. And then you can see here where we've got different parts that are the height, those are each gonna be six inches. So whenever we're doing a problem like this, we're always gonna start with our formula. This formula is kind of a big one, but remember, start with surface area equals two times length times width plus two times length times height plus two times width times height. Now we're basically just gonna start plugging some numbers in. So we're gonna start with the surface area, two times the length and the width. So I'm gonna look right here at what my length and what my width is. You can see that that's a three times five. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in parentheses three times five plus two times my length times my height. You can see my length here is three and my height is gonna be six plus two times the width times the height. The width is five and the height is six. Now we're gonna go ahead and start working through. Remember, according to PEMDAS, we want to do parentheses first. So let's go ahead and multiply. Three times five is gonna be 15, plus two times, we're gonna do this parentheses work right here, just like we just did the one right there, and we'll do that parentheses work first too. So three times six is 18, plus two times, and you can see the highlighted part, five times six is 30. Now we're gonna go in and individually work through multiplying these together. Because remember, you want to multiply before you ever go in and add each of these things together. So I'm gonna drop down surface area equals two times 15 is 30, plus two times 18 is 36, plus two times 30 is 60. Now, simply stick that into your calculator. 30 plus 36 plus 60, or you could do it in your head, is 126 inches, and here's the key for the unit. It's also gonna be squares because you are finding the surface area of something. So our answer is the surface area of that rectangular prism is 126 inches squared. All right, so now we're gonna go on to problem B. Once again, it's an example that's very similar to problem A, it's just got different numbers here. So first thing I want you to identify is the length. Remember the length, the keyword that I told you is whatever it's you're looking at straight on. So when I'm looking straight at this, I can see this part right here, which is eight meters. So that right there is going to be my length. The next one that's pretty simple to identify is the one going up and down, which is your height. And then the side length is gonna always be your width. We're gonna start off with our formula just like we did before, the surface area, and because this is a rectangular prism, we're gonna go ahead and do two times the length times the width, plus two times the length times the height, plus two times the width times the height. What I want you guys to do now is pause the video and attempt to see if you can get the answer on your own without me teaching it. All right, hopefully you paused it. Now let's just go ahead and start plugging in some numbers and double checking your work. My length is eight, my width is also eight, plus two times we're gonna do the length times the height, which is eight times five, plus two times the width times the height, which is eight times five. Remember, once again, we're gonna go ahead and do the work that is here inside of the parentheses before we ever go through and add up those things. So first off, we have the surface area is two times, eight times eight is 64, plus two times, eight times five is 40, 
plus 2 times 8 times 5 once again is 40. So now remember, just like I taught you before, we're going to go ahead and multiply these together before we add them together because according to PEMDAS, you have to multiply together first. So the surface area is 2 times 64, which is 128, plus 2 times 40, which is 80, plus 2 times 40 again, which is 80. When you add all of this together, you should have gotten 288 meters, and remember you want to go ahead and square the units. All right, hopefully you were able to get that one on your own. You're going to have some homework problems that are very similar to this today. All right, for number two, you can see our base has definitely changed. It is no longer a rectangle. It is now a triangle. So this is going to be trying to find the surface area of a triangular prism, which gives us a completely different formula. In order to find this one, we're going to go ahead and do the surface area equals. Remember, we've got two triangles, so we're doing two times half times base times height. So that part makes sense. Plus, we have to also add the areas of whatever the lateral faces were. Remember, lateral faces simply means whatever the shape is that's on the side. So let's kind of figure this out right here. We want to, first off, identify the different parts of our triangular prism here. Since this is 6, the heights over here are also going to be 6. The bottom part there, you can see the base is a 3, which means this one up here is going to be a 3, and this one over here is going to be a 4. So hopefully that helps you to kind of be able to identify those different parts to help us as we plug the numbers in. So starting off with plugging things in, we know this first part right here is I'm dealing with a triangle, 2 times half times base times height, plus it says the areas of the lateral faces. If this part right here is a triangle, this down here is a triangle, you can see what's left here is a rectangle because it's a 3 by 6 kind of piece. So you can see the number here, because I have three, uh, a triangle has three sides, there are three different rectangles. So you can see there is this first part of the rectangle right here, there's the other part that's right here, and then the other one is on this other side over here that we can't really draw a picture of, okay? So we're going to be adding together three rectangles, which is length times width plus length times width plus length times width, okay? So we've got our two triangles right here at the top and the bottom, and then the three rectangles that are there on the sides or the lateral faces. Now we're going to be plugging some numbers in. So the surface area is 2 times half times base times height. If you're remembering the base, you've always got to look at where this little 90 degree angle is. At the bottom of the 90 degree angle is going to be your base. So this down here is the base. We're going to multiply it times 3. And then the height is always the other part that forms that right angle right there. So our height is going to be 4. Plus, now we've got to look at our length times the width. Each of them are probably going to be a little bit different. So we're going to plug in the length times the width. Remember once again, triangles have different side lengths. This is 3 meters, this one's 4 meters, and this one is 5 meters. So now we're going to go ahead and look. Let's look at this first one right here, this green section. So what would the length be there for that one? The length is going to be this right here. Okay, so we're going to be multiplying 3 times 6. Plus, now let's go ahead and focus over here on this one. That is not going to be 3 times 6. This is a different measurement. Instead, your length now is what? 4, and your width, as you go up, is going to be 6. So now we're going to plug in 4 times 6. Plus, there's one more. We haven't done anything with this back side back here. That, the length is going to be 5, and then our width is still going to be 6. Six, <laughs> sorry. All right, so now let's start plugging some things in. Surface area equals 2 times half times 3 times 4. So you can do any order that you want in here. 3 times 4 we know is 12. 
half of 12 is 6. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a 6 here. And then let's keep multiplying together. 3 times 6 is 18, plus 4 times 6 is 24, plus 5 times 6 is 30. We're going to add all these things together. First, we've got to multiply these two. So we're going to be adding 12 plus 18 plus 24 plus 30. And when you add all of those up, you find that your surface area of this triangular prism is going to be 84 meters. And then you got to remember, because we're finding the area here, we are going to go ahead and square those units. All right, so we're going to do another example for problem B, still finding the surface area of a triangular prism, but there's just a couple things I want to point out to you first. Over here, if you would look at this right triangle, you can tell it's a right triangle. It's 90 degrees because, once again, it has that little box right there. So always, if you remember, the base is going to be down here at the bottom of that right angle, and the height is going to be right there. Those two things are called the legs, and then this one on the opposite, that long diagonal looking line, that's going to be called your hypotenuse. So just be careful because a lot of times people can't figure out whether the what's the base or what's the height, and then what's the hypotenuse. So let's just go ahead and glance over here. As you can see, a base, whenever you have, you're trying to figure out, is the base going to be like this? Some people might think, oh, the base this time is a rectangle. But that's not true because there are actually, this is a rectangle right here, this side over here is a rectangle, and then it almost looks like this side right here is a square. So there's three lateral faces, which means there are two triangular bases. So this is kind of like the top, and then this down here would be the bottom. So you can see from that right there, this is a triangular prism. It is not a rectangular prism. And once again, we can see that too because of this nice little 90 degree angle there. So if you remember something that I taught you before is we want to go ahead and label the parts that we don't know yet. If this bottom part is 13, then we know also the top part, which is our hypotenuse that I just taught you, is also going to be 13 right there. If this over here is 3, then that's going to mirror what that part over there will be also. And then this other one, if this one is a 12, then this dotted line that we have right here, that's also going to be a 12. So then we'll go ahead and mark that in. So for me, whenever I'm starting off something like this, I know that I'm going to have to take the two triangles, okay? So we know there's going to be two triangles because there's a top one and then there's a bottom one. Plus, if I look at all of this, I can see that I've obviously got rectangles here, okay? So this one over here is actually also, it kind of looks like a square, but because we can tell it's a three by five, it's also gonna be a rectangle. So we're gonna add length times width plus length times width plus length times width. And for the sake of space, I needed to go ahead and get rid of that extra triangle. So let's start with our formula. Surface area of two triangles. Remember, one triangle is going to be half times base times height. Plus, we've got these different rectangles here. So we're going to be adding the length times the width. And then we'll go ahead and plug in some of these numbers here. 2 times half times the base times the height. So let's just try to figure out the base. If you remember, the base is going to be at the bottom of that right angle. So the base has to be 5. And then the height, if you remember, it has to be the other part that is attached to that little square. This is important. You're always going to need to have that little 90 degree symbol in there to help you understand which one's the base and the height. And then obviously we're not going to be using this one because that would have been my hypotenuse, the new word that I just taught you. So instead we'll go ahead and put times 12. Plus, now we've got to figure out these different lengths. Remember, rectangles do not all have to be the same exact length, just like triangles don't have to be. So let's take this one right here, and we'll focus on this one. 
That to me seems like the easiest one. As I focus on that, then I can see I've got a length of three and a width of 13. Now it doesn't really matter which order you put it in because it's either gonna be three times 13 or 13 times three, and you'll get the same exact answer on those. So then you could see there's another one. If I were to focus on this rectangle back here, you can see that it is three times 12. So plus three times 12. And then we're gonna focus on that bottom rectangle that kind of looks like a square down here. And we've got three times five or five times three. And now it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just find what these pieces are. So we're gonna multiply two times. If you look right here, this is five times 12. And then I'm gonna take half of that. So five times 12 is 60, half of that is 30 plus three times 13 is 39, plus three times 12 is 36, plus three times five is 15. Now we've still got one that we haven't taken care of yet. That two times 30 is gonna be 60. And then we're just gonna add all the rest of these numbers together. When I add those together, I see that the surface area equals 150 meters squared. All right, so that's it for the new part of our lesson about triangular prisms. Next, I wanna just review real quick, classifying the pairs of angles. If you remember down here, this is obviously complementary, and how can we tell it's complementary? Because it's 90 degrees. Once again, we've got that little symbol right there. So. We understand that this is 69, which means the other one, it's gotta be 90 minus 69 degrees, which equals 21 degrees. So we've got complementary, and then once we figure out the value, it is x. Next up, we've got a straight line here, so we know this is gonna be supplementary. And one thing that we learned also, remember, a straight line is 180 degrees. So when you're trying to figure out what this is, it's got to be 117 plus something equals 180. So I can go ahead and take my 180, subtract the 117, and I can figure out that it was 63 degrees. So you can go ahead and box in. It was supplementary, and that X is going to be 63. If I were to plug this in up here, you can see that 63 plus 117, in fact, does equal the 180 degrees. Last one is vertical. Remember, it has these two lines right here, but they meet together at the vertex. That's the point. So whenever it's that, those are going to be called vertical angles. And one thing we learned about vertical angles back in chapter nine was that they equal each other. So we know here that x plus three is going to equal 84. In order to figure out what x is, we simply get rid of that three and you can discover that it's gotta be 81 degrees. All right, and there will be a few problems like this on your homework tonight too. So be sure to use these notes today as you work on your 10.1 homework assignment in the Big Ideas Portal.